so today we uh, wanted to talk a little bit about once in a lifetime events and opportunities and how it ties into the big event uh, solar event we have coming up uh, eclipse April 8 which is actually gonna cross through Vermont and as the eclipse the same is for other life events that mm -hmm. sometimes we have to jump on opportunities because later can become never you know right for example <coughs> this eclipse is once mostly once in a lifetime the last time that mm -hmm. there was one in vermont actually there is still a live couple vermonters that seen it it was like 1933 i hmm. believe and there's a lady that's a hundred years old um and then there's another guy he's 104 i believe and uh, they actually seen the last eclipse hmm. interesting the yeah, next cool. one eclipse is going to be in um 2044 that's so going to cross over vermont uh, no, I think in U.S., like total, oh, not even, Berm maybe, I'm not sure, perhaps, I would hmm. have to look that up. Interesting. But the total solar eclipses like this don't happen very often. Right. Well, I know they, I mean, they happen, right? They but just not coming over Vermont, like, so well. I think a lot of times they're just over the ocean. Well, they they happen like once or a couple times a year in various mm -hmm. parts of the earth, but often it's like at the let's say polar north or, right, or over like the ocean. areas yeah. that there's not a lot of populations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also what's different about this eclipse is that it's uh, going to happen at the time where sun is at its max activity hmm. because sun has magnetic solar activities right. happening. Right. Like it changes po poles, polarity, I guess. Sorry, I'm mm. not very that great in astronomy. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing about that in Earth science. But it's... Um, so the last time in 2017, there was an eclipse. It had the smaller shadow of the moon, so mm -hmm. it wasn't as wide as it's going to be this time. Yeah. But the last time when there was an eclipse, the sun was in actually remission. It was not very active. Hmm. Now that it's active, it's actually the sun looks more like a um, hairball where it has all these fires coming out of it. Mm. So when the moon is going to cover it, you're going to see all these little, you know, explosions that happen in the sun. Interesting. So it's going to be more intense, probably um, view and pictures to right. see after this one. Oh, that's cool. And I know that at least around here in Vermont, um, just because, you know, Burlington is going to be right in the path. It's like yeah. hotel rooms are like thousand dollars for a night. Maybe we should uh, rent tent space <laughs> in our backyard. It's funny you mention that. There's people on Airbnb renting tents for two hundred dollars a night. In yeah, the let's go to Walmart, buy some tents. <laughs> rent an this. RV. Um, yep. But um, so it's you know it is uh something that i would like to see i actually i think i saw maybe partial eclipse before mm -hmm. uh but there is important though to wear glasses it's very important to um put um solar protection on your eyes and actually there is a um there is an oculist um, eye doctor that's going to be giving out eyeglasses to people in South Burlington. If you bring a uh, non-perishable food item to the food shelf. Hmm. When are they doing that? Um, up until April 8th. Oh, that's cool. Um, they're open. They're just here a couple of minutes away from Dorset Street where mm. we are right now. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, Champlain Vision. So that's, that's cool. Yeah, because sometimes I worried like if you get glasses. I know. From I was just gonna say that online. that I was reading that it was 
you know, trying to be careful about buying from eBay or Amazon is, you know, some of these sellers are just trying to capitalize on the event. So, and your eyes are not something that you want to mess around with. Yeah. And I think it was, I mean, it was, I don't remember how long ago, but it was like a partial solar or solar eclipse or something was happening. And, you know, a friend kind of just like looked up and down and it was like they could see stars for like days. So you want to be careful. Well, you can get eye burn. Mm -hmm. It's like you get sunburn on your skin. You can get sunburn on your eyes. Mm -hmm. So that's one risk. The other risk is if you stare at the sun long enough, it can actually burn a hole in the back of your eyeball, and then you might have blind spots. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely don't want to look at it without some sort of proper protection. Yeah. It's not good for eyesight, yeah. and there were times when I was trying to take pictures in the past in like the sun because it's like looks so nice. But you can tell definitely that it affects your eyes in a negative yeah. way. Yeah. I wasn't looking directly at the sun, but even just having like the yeah. sun rays and the sunglasses, it's not really a protection. No, you can't use sunglasses. Um, you can't use welders glasses. They need to be specific. Yeah. Specific glasses. There is ways to make your own, mm -hmm. but you need like foil and a paper and then you kind of poke a hole, I think, and yeah. then you can put it in the box. But I mean, they're not expensive to get those special ones. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, just get them from reputable sellers. Yeah. Yeah. I remember as not a perhaps made in China. <laughs> yeah. As a kid, um, I was in elementary school and there was some sort of eclipse going on. And yeah, it was like we took a piece of cardboard, you cut like a small hole in it and then you kind of hold that between a piece of paper and the sun and you can kind of see the reflection on the, yes. the white paper yeah. so it's kind of a cool way there's other ways too like it, using like a box um to, to kind of look at it yeah to, it's almost like you're looking at the reflection yeah. and i talking about people trying to bank in on this glasses mm -hmm. there was a guy that became millionaire amazon seller millionaire because he like really got timely spot on to sell the eclipse glasses oh yeah i remember that guy i, I can't I remember what his, his name, name was john something yeah um and yeah so you know just uh just get a good ones right um and the thing is like i was wondering like you know the moon crosses every month mm -hmm. the path on the earth so we see like it covering the sun, right? Right. But the thing, the difference about the eclipse is that for this to happen, like 100% like this in the daytime is very, has to align in a very certain way with a certain angle. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that eventually is actually not going to be happening millions, millions years from now because the moon is like moving further away from the sun hmm. so this is this is not like a given event yeah. you know i mean we're in t in time right now that we have moon that is close enough and far away from the sun where it mm -hmm. can cover even though moon is like i think 400 times or 600 times smaller than the sun the earth is like 400 times smaller than the sun but the moon, moon even though it, but because it's closer to the earth that's why it can cover the sun which is bigger you yeah. know it's interesting <clears throat> when you start looking at sizes of planets and the sun you know the sun is quite large it was the largest the, yeah. yeah in the yeah. system solar that the closest one but um but the difference with so going back to like the moon going around monthly is that the eclipse is only covering that path you know mm-hmm so that means we're going to see sunset 360 because we're going to be only in this path that's dark. Mm -hmm. But all the other like states and continents going to still have daytime where they're supposed to have daytime. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're, we're, you know, like a shadow. We're pretty much going to be like a shadow. Yeah. But it won't get completely dark because there is light more far away from us. Yeah. 
That's interesting. And I was reading too, I think it was maybe Delta or United, one of the large commercial carriers, they're actually doing some sort of like eclipse flight path. Yeah, that sounds super cool. That would kind of neat. Yep. Definitely an unobstructed view and you'll be above the clouds, which would be pretty cool. Yeah. And um, so we actually going to Florida, we're, we're going to 10X conference. Mm -hmm. So we've been there last year, but we're going again, and we're also visiting Nick's aunt, and we're going to go to Key West, but we, we moved our trip so we could be back in time for the eclipse because originally we were going to be in Florida, and we don't want to miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, yeah. mostly me. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, it was relatively easy to move the flight, so and yeah. was, there was flexibility built into there. But, you know, I I think it would be cool. You know, I guess a lot of things don't happen directly over Vermont that are kind of once in a lifetime. So we'll see. There will um, be a lot of know, visitors. Yeah, I was uh, talking with a buddy. I think it was it was a couple of days ago, and they were saying that it's like something like – or no, it was last night at dinner um, with Chris. He was saying that it's – they're expecting like a hundred and something uh -huh. thousand people, you know, yeah. coming to Vermont, which is kind of uh -huh. crazy to think because, you know, Vermont's what, 500,000, 600,000 people 600, total. 000. So yeah. it's like, you know, a, a big increase in people. Well, from neighboring states, yeah. it's close to come to Vermont. But if yeah, you're down Canada, south, yeah. I would go to Texas because then mm -hmm. you're going to have the clearest clouds. I mean, chances are like one of our clients actually told me that he looked past years during cloudy. April yeah. 10, like the yeah. percentage. And actually, he found that most days were not cloudy. Oh, day. they were not cloudy. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So hopefully we luck out and it won't be too cloudy. Because, I mean, it is a springtime already. So yeah. there are less clouds. Well, no, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, Vermont's tw very touristy. So <laughs> it'll yeah. be good to... Uh, yeah, get, and you if know, you come revenue. into town, you can come try get a massage with us mm -hmm. to relax. But mm -hmm. I would say book in advance because yeah. I don't know, like we might be slammed. Well, a lot of schools are canceling. You know, yeah. my nephew's um, school is closed. We live in Colchester right now, and Colchester School District is closing for the for you know that day. Yeah, so. I'm not sure it's Burlington, but yeah, I know well, they're going to have some streets. Yeah, I mean Burlington it's going to be kind of similar for anybody that's listening that's in this area to you know the fireworks. So, you know, a lot of Burlington streets are going to be closed not off. King Street though. They do not close yeah, the King Street. Yeah. And there's going to be some sort of, you know, the the bus system's going to be running shuttles up and Lake down Main Street. Street yeah. Main Street. People yeah. parking at um, Gutterson, at UVM. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. You know, it'll be a good opportunity for a lot of food vendors. I don't think we're planning on going downtown to the waterfront, but. We might just watch it in uh, our office parking lot or at home, you yeah. know? Just put I mean, some we're so chairs close, out. yeah. Maybe yeah. light a little fire pit or something. Yeah. I mean, we're Marshall. thinking maybe at the South Burlington office and maybe grilling. And yeah, but I know that a lot of our staff, want, you know, they want to see it too. So we might have some snacks there. And uh, some of the – well, we, we're going to not book appointments, obviously, during that time. I don't know who would rather be getting a facial than watching a solar eclipse. I don't know. But you I never know. know. You know I think some people – yeah, I think some people um, maybe it's not staff. as – big a thing for some people but. yeah i know for some people it's not and it's you like know? four minutes <laughs> and at first like i didn't know either like what is the fuss mm. why everyone is talking so much about it but when you look at it you know it is one of the lifetime opportunities mm -hmm. so um i just really want to take this you know and, and moving into like one in a lifetime opportunities, the same comes to like business opportunities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, things line up, you gotta take a chance, you know, or like relationship or, or friendships, investments. Um, I, I like a quote from Steve Jobs. He actually had a saying that, you know, believe in all the dots lining up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if dots lining up, you have to take opportunity, you have to do it, you have to, you have to not miss those chances, you know? 
Yeah, it's um, I don't remember the exact quote from Warren Buffett, but, um, you know, essentially when everyone's jumping ship on stocks and, you know, investment opportunities, that's, you know, the time to actually invest, you know. So Mm -hmm. when. uh, Well, when others are fearful, you need to not be fearful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I agree on that. It's the same as like during COVID, you know, when everyone did not want to do anything mm-hmm. and take any action, sell, buy properties. That's when was the time to, the best time to right. sell, buy, you know, and yep. buy properties. Mm-hmm. So uh, when others are in uh, hibernation, you got less fish in the sea, less mm-hmm. competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and exciting, we just launched our franchise, uh, some franchise marketing efforts. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, so uh, we will might open another corporate location as well, mm-hmm. perhaps in the Stowe area. So that mm-hmm. is um, exciting news. Yeah, have another lo- location close by. Uh, yeah. Yep, cool. So how is your business doing? Things are good. Busy. Um, lots of opportunity pushing heavily in uh, the cybersecurity space, um, especially um, from a company called Sophos for anybody that might be technical that's listening. Uh, yeah. Sophos is the number one managed detection and response provider actually in the world. And uh, we recently just um, hit silver status with, with uh, Sophos. So we we're pretty excited about that. Um, but also, you know, it, it, it's best of breed, right? And a lot of things that are dictating with cybersecurity and the move to cybersecurity is business insurance. So a lot of business um, insurance is, is now requiring it. Mm-hmm. And so there's so much scammers out there. It's, it's just so bad. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bad actors. Yeah, it's. Uh, you know, it's it's unfortunately that's the the norm, the new norm now, yeah. right? Yeah, even the Facebook, like every day, people mm-hmm. try to like scam us. Even our business, they will be messaging, yeah. Oh, your Facebook is gonna be deactivated. You have to click right. this link, yeah. or you, or like they send us like payroll scam yeah. emails, like, oh, you know, can I like they pretend that they're one of our staff team members. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, can you update my direct deposit account? Yeah, that's unfortunately a very common scam. But we haven't fallen for those yet. Yeah. Hopefully we'll not Yeah, fall. fake invoices or invoices with malicious yeah. payloads. Those have been there for a long for a time, while, but the but more recent was like they actually pretend like yeah. they put first, last name, like they're creating yeah, impersonation fake email. scam. Yeah. Um, yeah, and messages. If anybody listening is wondering how you stop impersonation scams like that yeah how do you stop them um well glad you asked we sell a product (laughs) or we resell products sofo central email um that can help with impersonation scams you um, support the product yeah um the one thing that i just thought of while yolita was talking about facebook scams is um you know a lot of people willingly give up a lot of personal information on sites like facebook um, a very common thing on Facebook that's been around for years is there will be a kind of a, a viral thread, so to speak, or a viral post of, hey, everyone, what was your first vehicle? Or, you know, what was the name of your best friend growing up? Or what's your favorite color? And, you know, a lot of these things that sounds innocuous and sounds kind of fun. It's like, hey, but I don't want security question. Yeah, exactly. It's people harvesting information for a lot of security questions. Um, you know, what's yeah. your first vehicle? Where'd you grow up? What's the name of your high school? Street, you know, mascot yeah. are a lot of those security questions for um you know, password resets or accessing online accounts. The things to think about is when you do call into large providers, uh, say AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, you know, the other person on the other side is typically judged on, you know, how quickly do they get off the phone? How do they quickly, you know, they get a customer on the phone, resolve the issue and, and move on to the next one. So, you know, they're trying their best, right? You know, they want to do a good job, but sometimes when you're held to metrics that might be unrealistic sometimes that's where um you know customer service reps can be easily fooled into providing 
um, you know, access, yeah. SIM swapping, et cetera. And also there mm-hmm. sometimes there's cold calls, there are scam calls, yep. people calling you, especially with AI. Actually on Facebook, I also saw, mm-hmm. sorry, I keep bringing up Facebook, but it's just where it's a lot of scams there, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, you know, they will um, pretend, they'd like send you a friend request and they, they pretend like you're a friend or something mm-hmm. in need, like a fake profile. Yeah. Or they will say, oh, I want a lottery. I want to give away free, you know, gifts. And But right. I need you to send me this and that, you know. Yeah. And some, um, not not to mean to stereotype everyone, but sometimes like older people will fall for those. Especially. Yeah, unfortunately, especially with Facebook, it's the, the user population on Facebook is, is aged, right? It's even it's, though young people still use it. Yeah, too. but the vast majority, you know, it's it's an o- a, a platform with a lot it's of for everyone. Older, but there's older, you people, know, yeah. folks that maybe are not as technology adapt as as, you know, younger people or are more trusting. Right. Yeah. You know, even though young people still use yep. Facebook because they want to stay connected with their old family yep. members yep. and friends. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of events are posted just on Facebook, you know, uh, some, um, you know, I want to say Twitter, which is now called X. But, you know, there's some businesses that if you want to see when they're open or what's on the menu or what they're doing, it's only on Facebook or it's only on X or Twitter, yeah, or you know. Google. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, a lot of these platforms, you know, provide a service that a lot of businesses utilize, which kind of then draw people, you know, necessitate mm-hmm. people, you know. It's using also, those it services. is still a very good, it's one of the best ads um, mm-hmm. platforms to market business. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, people, yeah. you know, do expect to find like services products yep. ads on there and mm-hmm. listings and yep. things like that yep F- there's marketplace too <laughs> which is a little you know you gotta be, be careful, careful there <laughs> yeah be very careful well. deal with people locally deal with people yeah. in person and public so what spots. industries do you serve uh, mostly for yeah. cyber security yeah, so uh, you know our bread and butter has always been um, kind of the the three A's, right? Attorneys, auditors, and accountants. You know that was kind of the bread and, and butter for clinics, a, a long time. Yep, totally. Um, breaking into you know wellness, but really the 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 most common people that we work with or businesses that we work with and, and speak with is that that business that's kind of the eight to 12 person, six also to 12 person. Also construction companies. Yep, construction companies. Like electricians. Yeah, so, you know, in total we have about 80, cl- 80, 80 clients or so. Um, manufacturing, yep, right? Yep, about yeah, 80 clients, the, um, the vast majority of which are kind of in that six to eight person realm, which is a good sweet spot it, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, they have requirements um, that they might need to meet for uh, regulatory requirements. Um, you know, their business um, insurance might be dictating certain things that they need to do for auditing, et cetera. But also, you know, they're, they're large enough that you, um, you know, they have a need for IT, IT services they're willing to spend, you know, and money because they can, they understand. Well, they have to. Yeah, and they understand that, you know, IT is not necessarily just a cost center, you know, it can be a, a profit center, right? Mm-hmm. If your employees are struggling trying to do basic things, sharing files or, um, you know, just general office type applications, and they're not able to do that successfully, you know, you're just wasting time, right? Wasting time and money. So, um, but, you know, to get back to what Yolita was talking about. Yeah. So the, you know, really any customer in that six to eight person, six to 12 person is really, um, where we like to hang out, so to speak. And for me, it's, it's a good sector to be in because the company, you still have access to the owners, the CEOs of the company, the executive leadership, they're still actively involved. And that's where, you kind of have the most fun where 
they're growing their business and you know you're also growing your business as well and you're going along with it at, at the same time and you can be complementary to each other so you can say hey you know have you guys yeah. run into this have you done this or that coffee shops do you yeah. serve some coffee yep. shops coffee shops retail um you know creative agencies i'm trying to think if there's really any a type of um you I know, believe sector that we don't you really said have you don't some really sort of serve medical that HIPAA compliant. Yeah, we try to stay. Um, you know, there's definitely re requirements in terms of um, you know medical HIPAA. But you can still serve, for example, our brilliant massage and skin, yeah. and then. Mm -hmm. um, psychotherapy uh, yeah they're the not like hospitals yeah the, I, mean, I meant medical to be like actual hospital mm -hmm. yeah the with doctor's office um is just you know or just like acupuncture using doctor um you know like a general practitioner's office as a an example um if their electronic health record management system is web-based you know something like charm you do or serve cetera. naturopathic yep. office too yeah so anything you know exp in that realm of healthcare where hipaa could be a requirement you know we would shy away from a, a client that has on-premise equipment you know where they're storing medical records on an on-premise server or on-premise file share um, if they're using an online charm is uh you know an electronic health rent management record system that but i guess you could mm -hmm. help them to switch if it so that's typically where an it provider would be part of the equation right mm -hmm. we're not the ones to migrate from an on-premise health management and record system to an online one that's best to be you know professional services from the company that you're switching to however there's a lot of there's a lot of moving components to that right so it's, you know, making sure that the underlying infrastructure that you're doing that move in a secure manner. And there could be some temporary infrastructure that needs to be set up. Right. Um, but, you know, there's there's to any project, IT is always a component of it. You know, yeah, especially in today's technology yep. world, we use digital phones, we use computers, yep. we use printers people don't even use like fax anymore you know yeah, the irs is. still likes faxing <laughs> yeah but for the most part you know any project you can think of there's some sort of it component right almost you know just thinking marketing you know you're going to be sending out targeted digital marketing via email there's a there's an infrastructure component to make sure that those outbound emails are not getting caught as spam and a recipient's spam folder getting marked as impersonation etc so it doesn't matter what the type of project is. There's always that IT component. For it. Yeah. Cameras, security, phones, computers, mm -hmm. systems, emails. Yep. yep. It's a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, well, if you uh, don't live in Vermont and you come to visit to Vermont, I hope you have a nice visit. It's very good place to go hiking we have a lot of great food mm -hmm. restaurants farm to table definitely yeah. try those uh, burlington south burlington stowe area is um amazing and uh lake you know lake champlain yeah Colchester. i mean chittenden county is definitely the largest spot in vermont yeah. but there's you know there's plenty of spots outside the northeast kingdom is beautiful you know yeah. maybe not as much um you know restaurants and you know physical brick and mortar places to visit but there's a lot of outdoor things to do a lot of farms you know a lot of farms now also offer a dining experience it might not be every day so you know check where you're going um but you make know, a reservation yeah but you know getting outside of burlington there's still plenty of things to do yeah and we actually plan to open perhaps in stow leave us in the comments down below yeah. would you like to see one of our locations open up in stow yeah because currently we have burlington and south burlington mm -hmm. and we think that stow would be a nice spot perhaps because we do have clients coming up from there to see us about 40 minute drive and 
if you need IT services, you know who to <laughs> also contact. Yep. And if you just, you know, if you are just curious about what IT services could potentially benefit you or what you're struggling with, you know, no hassle, no pressure, honest advice, you know, always happy. You can happy schedule to, a free consultation. Yep, always call. happy to to have it's a, on the a website, call and itnvt.com yep. itnvt.com but you serve all 50 states though you have yeah so businesses. yeah kind of like i said before we have about 80 clients um nationwide um and uh I'd say about 30 percent are actually in vermont the vast majority are outside of uh vermont and uh, with most companies these days, especially after COVID, a lot of companies are just going virtual. You know, there was yeah. uh, one client that I'm thinking of, I think they have employees in 15 or 16 different states. Remote work. Yeah, so it's sometimes a little bit difficult to play the, uh, um, the uh, like, time zone game. Oh, <laughs> trying to it's only four hours. Trying to sometimes. figure out... Um, it's like, oh, well, what time can we meet? Oh, 10 o'clock. Okay, you know, uh, well, what time zone are we talking about? <laughs> you know? Eastern yeah, or so. Central, right? Or Pacific, yeah. yeah. So it's, just, you know, um, but, yeah. By the way, I wish mm -hmm. there wouldn't be time change. I It just, I feel like I just get used to the new time in six months. Well, like Arizona agrees with you. So. Yeah, and then maybe I need to retire into Arizona someday. Yeah. But uh, I just get used to and then they switch it. And now, like, this game, because I have trouble falling asleep early. Mm -hmm. And now, like, with the time change, I just stay up even longer. Yeah. So it's not that great i don't know what do you guys think post in the comments down below i think we should petition again right but i know it's stuff for kids in the morning during winter time right. when it's dark so mm -hmm. it is what it is yep great well, well i appreciate we appreciate you tuning in for yeah. episode 12 right we covered uh the big event coming up here in vermont and also a little bit of update from some both sides info so, yeah. uh, about nicholas's it services mm -hmm. and a little bit update on our you know don't miss opportunities yep. you know the inspirational nugget for today is what you can do today you know if you can expand your business do it if you can hire more people if you can serve more people do it if you can see a solar eclipse once in a lifetime do it because you know you never know if uh, tomorrow is not given yep. so if you don't do it this year you'll be a one year older next year yeah take so. opportunities enjoy life and we'll see you next time have next a one. brilliant day